All right, students, want to take a moment and show you how to do this ionic, piecing together ionic compounds activity. Typically, this was a manipulative. We would have printed versions of puzzle pieces for you guys in class that you'd be able to manipulate on your table. But we don't have that luxury because a lot of you don't have printers. And so we wanted to make an online version that you guys can manipulate. So we decided to use Google Slides in order to do that. It will be a little bit touchy, especially if you're on a phone, but it is possible. So we'll teach you some of the tricks there. All right, so the instructions. What you're doing is you're gonna be using the puzzle pieces on slide two to make compound matches in the box on the right, kind of like what you see here. Here's an example, which I'm gonna go through. And then you're gonna use that information in slide three to fill out a data table. Um, now, some of the rows have been done for you. And then finally, when you're done, you're gonna answer some questions. There are some hints down here that I'm gonna go over um, as we go, but let's go ahead and try this out. So. There's the puzzle pieces on slide through two. These are manipulative, so you can move them around. Now, one of the hints says that if you do accidentally make a mistake with these puzzle pieces, like when you're moving it and one of them becomes really skewed like that, you can always use the undo button, both on the phone and on the computer, computers control Z. To, to fix that. And so you might want to zoom in on your phone uh, to be able to move these around a lot better. All right, so the data table right here, it says, let's do the first row uh, kind of together. What it says here is I need magnesiums and I need chlorines, all right? Now it says here on the hints, it says to only use two types of atoms. So we can only use magnesiums and chlorines. So here's my puzzle pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and grab magnesium and I'm gonna grab chlorine. All right, so I'm gonna put these together and notice it starts to create a puzzle. Now this puzzle is not finished. We need to be able to create a perfect rectangle. Now to do that, I'm gonna add another thing here. Now, according to this hint, it says only use two types of atoms. And so my types of atoms here are magnesium and chlorine. I cannot per se put, like put a fluorine here. That's not a legal move. So this is not okay because I have three different types of atoms, magnesium, chlorine, and fluorine. But what I can do is I can add another chlorine. Let me add another chlorine. So this is an okay move. I can do this because it is two different types of atoms, even though there are many of the same types. I see some students do that, especially here. So again, this is not an okay move where they're like, all right, iron and oxygen, I wanna put those together. This is possible, but I need to add more oxygens and irons. Some students see this and they're like, oh, I just need to add a little piece right here. Again, this is not an okay move because it can only have two different types of atoms, not three different types of atoms. All right, so let's go to our example example up here. So this example is complete. We've completed this puzzle. It's a perfect rectangle. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our data table. So magnesium and chlorine. How many magnesium pieces did we use? Well, I see here we used one magnesium piece. So I'm going to go ahead and put a one right there. All right. How many chlorine pieces did we use? Well, we used two chlorine pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. All right. How about the total charge? So it says here the net or total charge and it must be zero. Well, let's check that out. So I know I used magnesium. Magnesium was a plus two and I used chlorine and chlorine was a minus one, but I had two chlorines. So two minus one minus one is equal to zero. So we did it correctly. Our net charge is zero. All right, what's our compound formula? Well, to do compound formulas, we always do just the symbols and how many there are next to them. So there's only one mg, so I'm gonna put mg, but I'm not gonna put any number there because there's only one of them. Now for chlorine, I'm gonna put Cl, and there were two chlorine pieces. So I'm gonna put a two after that. Now, if you notice down here, typically the numbers that represent how many there are are subscripts like that. But I know it's gonna be challenging for some of you guys to do subscripts. If you figure it out, I say go for it. But if you don't do subscripts, that's quite all right. Just leave it two there. So there's one magnesium and two chlorines. And this is the compound formula. This is MgCl2. Now, if I type in MgCl2 in a Google search, it's gonna tell me that the name of that compound is magnesium magnesium chloride, All right? So magnesium chloride, 
chloride. Thank you. So this is the name of that compound, and I had to look that up on Google. And that's basically it. We just finished that puzzle. Now, if you note here, it says continue to reuse the same pieces to make other compounds. So once I'm done with that piece or whatever pieces I'm doing, this isn't a complete puzzle. I'm, I mean, it is, but I'm done with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces back so I can reuse these pieces to make other compounds. So if you look at your data table, the first four rows underneath the example row, I have you making specific compounds. This one's between potassium and oxygen. So same thing, I'm gonna pull potassium and I'm gonna pull oxygen and I have to use just potassium as an oxygens. For the next one, I want you to make this compound. It's K3P, this one's made of calcium and nitrogen. Now this one's challenging for a lot of students. I promise you can make it if you only use calciums and nitrogens. Finally, this one I'm giving you a name, calcium sulfide. See if you can figure out how to make it from calciums and sulfurs. Now the last rows down here are blank because I want you to make whatever compounds you can. Use any of the pieces from the puzzle pieces to make them. As long as you're following that rule of those only using two types of atoms being used. All right, when you're done with all that, answer these analysis questions. There's six questions and you're just gonna answer them in complete sentences here. Good luck guys.